I am a horrible test taker, so I knew when it came to the bar exam, if I wanted to pass, I had to be as prepared as possible for what to expect on the actual day of the bar exam. So in today's video, I wanted to break down my effective strategies and some things that you kind of want to know and what to expect on the actual bar exam days. Now my first exam tip that you need to know for the bar exam is timing and pacing. The timing and pacing depends on which section of the bar exam you're actually taking, so I'm going to split this up between the multiple choice or MBEs, the essays, and the performance test. Now for the MBEs, you want to be mindful that there are 100 multiple choice in each section. So there's 100 multiple choice in the morning and 100 multiple choice in the afternoon session. And within those sections, you have three hours to answer the 100 multiple choice questions. So what I wanted to do because I was so nervous and this was the weakest part of the test for me. For example, you have three hours to complete 100 questions. So what I did was as soon as the proctor said you may begin, I wanted to mark my Scantron, divide let's say like 100 divided by three. So that means that you have 33 questions to answer within every single hour. When I got my Scantron, I would mark the 33rd question, 66 and 99. So those markers, those three markers would make sure that I was on point and on pace to make sure I would complete all 100 questions in the three hours. Now, as a pro tip for the MBE section, you have to remember that each question is literally weighed the same. So meaning that if you're down to the wire and you have, let's say two questions left and you only have like, you know, a minute and a half to answer and you're down to a property question that takes up like whole page of the question book. And then you have an evidence question that's like, two sentences, I think it's pretty clear what you should do here, but you should focus all your energy on the short question so that way you can get through it quickly and pick the best answer choice that you can so you can get it right. Now my second pro tip is keep it pushing. Worst thing you can do is shoot yourself in the foot and get lost in the sauce by trying to answer a long fact pattern like contracts or property and civil procedure. Those are the three subjects I know on the MBE just take up like a page and a half versus, you know, contracts questions or evidence questions are like super, super short. I would say that you want to have, I did the math and I'm pretty sure that if you divide it, you should be spending around 1.8 minutes per question. So for me, I was aiming for around like a minute and a half per question to make sure I was on pace to answer all 100 questions within the three hours. Now for the essay portion, I handled this around the same. I always wanted to make sure that I was on time and I wanted to make sure I wasn't borrowing any time between each essay. So in the morning session, you have three hours to complete three essays. And that can be kind of daunting if you have all racehorse questions. So my tip here is that as soon as the proctor says you may begin, you flip over your book. It was I would prime my brain to see what the questions were. So I would look at all three essays and I would look at the call of the question to be like, okay, this is contracts. Let's say essay two was con law. And let's say the third one is evidence. I already know my head based on my experience or based on my studying habits and all the essays I have seen that those three are going to be super racehorse essays. I need to make sure that I go through the issue really, really quickly because I just need to raise and dismiss. This is why it's so important that you actually do a lot of essay questions and see as many patterns as you can because you would know that if you got an evidence question that it's going to be a racehorse of an answer and that you can't borrow any time between the other essays or else you're going to end up with a short answer and you want to make sure you get all the points as possible. So really have to be smart about your timing here. Now, as a pro tip for the essays, what I like to do was I would mark the time. So let's say for the essay portion that the proctor starts at 9 a.m. I would take all three essays and I would mark at the very top. I would say for essay one, it would be 9 to 10 a.m. The next one would be 10 to 11. And the last one would be 11 to 12. I really liked to be on point and making sure that I was not borrowing time. If you borrow that 10 minutes, that means you have 10 minutes less the next two essays. Now, my second pro tip for the essays, I actually barely wrote anything on my scratch paper because I know that on the exam that you're given like a scratch paper and a lot of people like to highlight or write their essay outline on the actual paper copy of, of the essay but what I actually did was I would highlight just like as I was actually reading but I wouldn't do my outline on the scratch paper or on the essay paper itself I would go directly onto my laptop start drafting out my essay on my laptop so that way I didn't have to transfer everything from writing into my computer because at the end of the day you want to save as much 
time as possible. The worst thing that you can do for yourself is freeze and choke. I kind of thought it was helpful that even if I didn't know what to write yet, let's say if it was contracts, I would just start writing out my contracts template that I had already memorized. For example, you know, you can say like governing law. Just you starting to type already gets the juices flowing and kind of puts you in a good rhythm to position to start writing your essay. So don't write on the actual piece of paper, just start putting it directly on your laptop or on ExamSoft. Now for the last portion on the bar exam, which is the performance test. Now the performance test really is about, just, this is similar to all the other two, but is about timing and practice, especially so with the performance test. And this is because you don't actually need outside knowledge or you don't need to really know the law or memorize like outlines to answer the PT. The PT is a closed universe. They give you, you know, a packet of evidence and a packet of use cases for you to analyze. And the question will be like, draft me a memo based off of XYZ. Now for the performance test, I would go to your state bar's website, download all of the past performance tests, and then read and then apply all of those questions. Now as a pro tip, if you're taking the test in California, what I did was I actually did the performance test first. So in the afternoon session where you're given two essays and the PT, I literally decided to do the performance test first and then I did the two essays after. And I knew that the performance test was pretty much worth two essays. I didn't want to save it for the end where in the case that I accidentally, you know, borrowed time from the first two essays that I would be left with no time with the performance test. By the way, if you're liking this content so far, then check out this video where I break down my very detailed schedule of how I passed the bar exam. I also attached a PDF schedule where you can just print it out and you can see my monthly, daily, and weekly schedule of what I did for the bar exam. In this packet, I also included some blank templates for you to use on your study journey. I hope you like the printable schedule and if you like this kind of content, then feel free to like and subscribe.